Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about the classification of journal. Uh, classification of journal means we are going to talk about uh, how different journals are going to be segregated in different category. For that one, uh, we may have different types of criteria. Uh, a number of criteria can be applied. Uh, you can have a criteria like uh, on the basis of uh, its uh, publication processes, reviewing processes, you can have criteria on the basis of its uh, open access or the subscription charges. Uh, you can have the criteria on the basis of its impact factor, scope, subject area. So different way you can classify the journals on different criteria. Uh, so first classification, uh, what we are going to talk about that is on the basis of subject area. Uh, you are knowing that uh, there are a number of journals in almost every field like uh, if you go to any databases or any publishers uh, They are publishers in different fields uh, like if you go to the Elsevier they publishes journals in the field of uh, Science arts commerce humanities law management every field Similarly Springer Whaley every journal publisher have all those things So on the basis of subject or discipline we can classify we can categorize journals and you can search also journals on the basis of their subject or the field in which they are going to publish it. Uh, so we have different journals which publishes journals in the medicine, medicine field, engineering, social sciences, humanity, natural science, business, law, uh, fine arts, fashions and different things. And these normally helps uh, researchers to identify journals in their specific area. So this is one kind of classification on the basis of their subject area. Uh, then we are going to uh, use different matrices also to classify journals. Uh, journal matrices is now how means matrices means you are going to uh, evaluate journals, uh, evaluate certain things, uh, research related components on different parameters. Uh, so that is called matrices. So when we are going to talk about the publication matrices, we have three broad category of matrices. One is journal matrices on the basis of which we are going to evaluate journals, status journals, uh, reputations. Then we are having the author's matrices, which is uh, by which we are going to uh, categorize, we are going to evaluate author's performance. And then we are having particular specific papers, specific articles matrices. But here we are going to talk about the journal matrices. In journal matrices, the major cate category is based on the citations. So they are categorized into the citation matrices. They are called as citation matrices. There are three major platforms we are having, major database we are having, which uh, evaluate which normally have a citation databases. That is uh, Scopus. Uh, then we are having Web of Science, and then we are having Google Scholar. So all three databases have their own journal mat citation matrices. Like Google Scholar have Google Scholar matrices, which is like H5 index, H5 index, H10 index, citations. So that is called as Google matrices, Google uh, Scholar matrices. Some other time, some other video, we will talk about the Google matrices and Google Scholar, uh, how to use Google Scholar and what are the different parameters, different information you can use Google Scholar in a better way. Then we are having Scopus. Scopus normally, uh, going to categorize journals on the basis of their site scores. So the major that, um, general matrices Scopus is having that is SJR, uh, then SNP and site score. Site score is the most important characteristic feature in the Scopus on the basis of which journals are going to be categorized into different quartiles also. So all the journals in the Scopus are going to be divided into four quartiles, Q1 to Q4. Q1 means top 25% of the journals into the that it falls under the Q1, then Q2, then Q3, and then Q4. Similarly, in Web of Science, uh, journals are going to be categorized mainly in the, on the basis of impact factor. Site score and impact factor, site score by Scopus and impact factor by Web of Science is almost same, except the duration they considered. Scopus for the calculation of site score they consider the previous four years data. Whereas Web of Science for the calculation of impact factor, they consider the previous two years data. But almost every, these are the every same, same. So these are the different journal matrices uh, based on the citations. So journals can be classified on these different databases like Scopus, Web of Science, or Google Scholar on the basis of their citation counts, H index, article counts, site score, impact factors. 
and these classifications normally help researchers scholars uh, for categorizations or their selection of the uh, means, uh, suitable journals for their for paper or manuscript so journals are normally categorized into quartiles or percentiles so if you will go to the scopus website scopus database if you will go to the web of science their quartiles will be there journals are going to fall into either q1 to q4 category and depending on the impact factor or the site score basis so one day i will uh, have a, another video on the scopus quartiles of the matrices where i will show you how you can see the different quartiles of the journal you can select the quartiles uh, so journals can fall into the q1 that is a top 25 percent of the impact factor impact factor or site score and then top 20 uh, 10 percent top one percent like that one we are going to see then we are having another classifications of the journals on the basis of their open access category their uh, charging category means how they are going to charge how they are going to make money how they are going to uh, ask the money or from where they are going to run their system so the, if you'll see if you'll forget this uh, things then we are having journals are going to be have two major category on the basis of this funds that is one is called as uh, of open access journals uh, open access journal means where journals are articles are freely available for the, all the researchers so no one has to pay anything to read the article that is called as open access it will be available for everyone and second category is called a subscription based model where the reader has to pay most of the cases open access journals charges money for the publication from the authors so author needs to pay most of the cases not all the cases uh, whereas in case of subscription based model author need not to pay anything only reader has to pay so in open access author need to pay most of the cases readers no need to pay in case of subscription based model author does not have to pay but reader has to pay so journals are categorized on the basis of their access model open access journals are uh, free content freely available for the readers while subscription based model journals require subscription to purchase there are some journals which publishes in the different category like they are having in open access they are having the green category uh, then we are having uh, gold green platinum hybrid and number of other category so if you will see uh, in open access models we are having these are the different category a gold category that is the on top that is normally publishes yeah in this case publishers normally makes article fully accessible on the journal's website under a creative common license or similar type of license in that case an apc that is article processing charge is usually usually paid by the authors or their funders there uh, who are going to support them so they have to pay the amount for that article so that is apc charges have to pay Whereas in case of hybrid model, there are journals, uh, a subscription journals uh, normally have a option that some articles, depending on the author's choice, the article can be freely available. So there you have to both the options. Most of the many of the journals now are running into the hybrid mode. They have both open access and the subscription based model. If author want their article to be freely available, they will go for open access charges. Then they have to pay the open access fee. If they want to go for subscription based model, they don't need not to pay anything. So that is hybrid model. Then we are having diamond or platinum. In that case, journals uh, that publishes open access but do not charge APC. In that case, normally uh, publishers not charging anything. Articles will be freely available, but authors need not to pay anything. However, the publishers have some funded by some other sources. They have some other agencies, some advertising or philanthropy or some institutions going to support them to run their publications. Then we are having branch. Uh, in the case of branch journals that are free to read online but do not have a license, they are not generally available to reuse purposes. And last one is the green, uh, where normally refers to the self archiving generally to the pre or post print of the article in a dis, uh, repository though green open access generally refers to the post print of an article there are three different category of, uh, in the case of green uh, we have preprint post print and publishers version preprint before reviewing before publications of your article before reviewing that print that is called a preprint post print is uh, the author's copy of article after it has been reviewed and corrected but before the publishers had formatted 
in for it for publications that is called as post print after post reviewed and last one is the publisher's version the version that is formatted and appeared in the print or online version so this is the how journals are going to be classified on the basis of their open access then journals are also going to be classified on the basis of peer review processes so peer review is a process when you are going to know most of the cases when you are uh, for a good journals when you are going to submit a, your articles journal uh, editorial office uh, scrutinize those articles and then they send it to the reviewers uh, when they are going to send the reviewers there are different types of reviewing process so if your articles are going to be subjected to the rigorous evaluation by an expert that is called a peer review process peer review process in that peer review process we are having single blind double blind peer review blind blind peer review means in that case normally author's identity has been hidden uh, means reviewers does not knowing who is the author of whose paper is that one so that is called a blind review then we are having non peer reviewed in such case in this case most of the cases of so magazines or trade publications they are normally not peer reviewed process and this is one of the criteria for selection means uh, journals which is going to fall into the predatory category also so this also help uh, uh, researchers to select a journal which is peer reviewed so that it will not be a predatory journals then there are journals are going to be classified on the basis of regional or national classifications there are a number of journals which publishes articles based on the study conducted for a specific geographical region or a specific country or a specific area so uh, that is on the basis of regional or national uh, classifications then we are having the journals are going to be classified on the basis of their publication frequency uh, like journals are going to be published monthly basis quarterly basis annual half yearly like that one uh, so some journals may have a continuous publication model where articles are published as soon as they are going to be accepted so this is on the basis of publication frequency there are the number of publication journals which is going to be associated with not with the publication or they are associated with certain organizations certain academic society some certain professional bodies research organizations so uh, normally these associations help or increase the journals reputations so uh, that is on the basis of society or affiliated uh, classifications then we are having hybrid or traditional classifications normally on the basis of which type of how they are going to publish their paper so on the basis of publication model most of the cases traditional journals they publishes article in the print form in the hard copy while hybrid journals printed normally both online and of uh, online versions and e versions so hybrid journals often provide additional features like if some journals uh, whenever we are going to submit my article and my article have sufficient too much data so all the data should not be part of my main articles so article will have some limited amount of data and the additional data can be part of the supplementary materials uh, or sometime uh, we are going to support our journal articles or the data by certain videos certain animations those things should be online available uh, in case of hybrid journals and uh, then last uh, classification is on the basis of their indexed or the abstract classification many journals are going to be classified on the basis of how they are going to be indexed into the different uh, indexing agencies like indexing databases like pubmed medline scopus web of science so whenever a journals are going to be indexed or abstract in a repeated database it increases the journal's visibility discoverability or their reputations also so uh, this is uh, these are the different kind of classifications models of the journals one classification uh, scheme i have not talked about that is on the basis of languages journal can be classified based on their language in which they publishes articles such as english language journals or the local language like journals so uh, these criteria can help researchers and uh, scholars identify suitable journals for publishing their works and navigating the vast landscape of the academic publications hope you have understand it it will help uh, researchers uh, for selection of a specific journals in their specific field if you have any query any comments you can write in the comment box if you have not subscribed my channel you can subscribe it thank you very much have a nice day